celebrate the 10 best days of summer with Venus. For a limited time only, our fun, sexy swimwear and fashion styles are up to 70% off. And you can get an additional 10% off your entire order. Just visit venus.com and use the promo code BEST to save today. Walker and welcome to Closet Conversations. Today I will be reviewing episode 8, season 1 of the Netflix series called Girl Boss, based on the book by the same name, written by Sofia Amoroso. And uh, this is my least favorite episode. <laughs> this series got panned by a lot of people, and there is so much good reselling info in here and I can just tune out the rest but even I had a real problem with this episode I mean this is by far the dumbest thing I've ever seen they could have just left this out this is useless it has absolutely no value to me to watch it is meaningless it's basically a road trip from San Francisco to LA and the big takeaways are just you know don't do drugs so <laughs> that's the takeaway oh the reselling podcast what can i say what can i say 20 year olds do what they do so um the big thing is they're on vacation together and this is a if you if you ever want to know your differences with someone and if you're compatible you have to travel together it tells you everything so annie and her boyfriend have absolutely nothing in common annie wants to go to the Walk of Fame and see Britney Spears' star. And her boyfriend wants to see the Eames house, you know, mid-century modern and <laughs> um, wonder of architecture. So you can see how different these two people are. So anyway, I'm going to review the episode because I promised that I would. So basically they get there and Sophia meets her boyfriend, Sean, at the club where the band is rehearsing. And they are not too happy that she interrupts their band rehearsal to say hello to him. And they make it very clear. So later you see Sophia at the bar that night and her boyfriend is singing a song to her. Dedication from the stage was very sweet. And then Annie is there with her boyfriend and Annie decides <laughs> she's going to take drugs from a stranger. I know. Brilliant. Has absolutely nothing to do with anything. But uh, this is the episode. So there's all this drama about her taking the, the uh, taking drugs that were offered to her from a stranger at, at the club. So needs to say, club scene's over. Everyone's back into their hotel rooms. Annie and her boyfriend are arguing because it's real clear they have absolutely nothing in common at this point because <laughs> she's very immature. She's taking drugs from strangers. She wants to see Britney Spears stars on the Walk of Fame. He's like grown-ass guy. He's beyond all that. He wants to see serious stuff like the Eames House. And, you know, so, and he's not interested in doing recreational drugs. He's kind of not in that phase. And so, ah, uh, this episode. So nonetheless, the whole drama is she ends up taking taking the pill or half a pill, and then he ends up taking half a pill. And so they both end up tripping on acid. I'm sorry, this is the episode. Has absolutely nothing to do with anything. This is why it got panned. And then, um, so, like, half of the episode is them hallucinating in the hotel room. It's so stupid. So then you have Sophie and her boyfriend, and the next scene is them, like, going swimming, and, you know, she's just kind of watching him swim from the balcony, because, she didn't really prepare well, with, didn't bring a swimsuit or anything, so that's why she's not joining him. And then, like, later you, we see them having lunch at a diner, and then you never know. You know how when you ever, like, are ordering food with somebody, and they're like, do you want... It's always about French fries, always. Do you want to share the fries, or do you want your own, right? <laughs> so... No girl, like, ever wants to be like, oh, I want my own fries, right? Because you don't want to look like you're eating too much. So she's like, oh, no, I don't want fries. And so in this episode, they order one order of fries. They both order burgers or whatever. And the fries come first. You know how those restaurants who bring you fries before the rest of the meal? So she starts eating them and then, it, like, eats the whole thing. And you see him trying to move the fries to his side of the table. So later, when they're back in the hotel room, 
he's all pissed at her and he's like She's like, what is your problem? And he's like, you're so selfish. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, the fries. Man, if you wanted fries, you should have just ordered fries. You know, why did you eat mine? Okay, so this is the episode. We got arguing over French fries. And we got the other couple doing recreational drugs and hallucinating. It's just, just pitiful. So anyway, it all comes out, though, that, um, you know, he doesn't take her seriously with her job and... He gets upset that she's on the phone, like, looking at eBay sales. And for all of us who know how this works, we're always checking our phone, right, for a Poshmark notice, for an eBay notice, right? So he doesn't kind of like that. So she doesn't like the way he's interacting with the band. She doesn't understand the role of a manager in a band, and so it looks like he's a, like a paid hired help. He doesn't he it doesn't elevate him so to speak and she's very unhappy at how he's getting asked to get cabs for band members and do all like pick up dry cleaning all that kind of thing and she makes it known that she doesn't like that and so they get in this huge argument she's like you know you're jealous of my um my ebay and all my work and he's like no i'm not and blah 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 okay so this is the episode i don't even know what to tell you like <laughs> In the end, Annie and her boyfriend are no longer tripping, and Sophia and her boyfriend have decided to take a quote-unquote break, you know, decide if they're together because they care about each other or not, and that's it. This is my episode. It has absolutely nothing to do with reselling. Um, the only thing that they bring up at all is the tension between Annie and her boyfriend over the amount of time they both spend working at their jobs. And so I think the takeaway on this one is that a lot of people I've talked to, there's it's split about 50-50, the number of people who have full support from their spouses or significant others and those who don't. And I think that the tension between the kind of focus you put to do well as a seller, every moment you're spending on that, you're not spending on something else. So that whether it's children or whether it's the dog or whether it's the husband or the boyfriend or the significant other, or whatever it is, you can't be in all places at one time. And I think this is a real thing. It's a real left of center thing to be talking about on a series, but it's the only takeaway from this episode is how you navigate the fact that you're going to be spending hours and hours and certainly as you grow even more hours, sourcing, processing, listing, managing, and overseeing your business, even if it's part-time, that's all stuff you're not going to be spending on other people. And other people don't take kindly to that, <laughs> right? You can say, you know, a lot of people think they have a supportive spouse or significant other. I got to keep remembering, you know, it's significant other. Everyone uh, doesn't have one that's supportive or if they think they are supportive until this kind of activity takes up just too much of the time and they're no longer comfortable with it. So I think that's valid. I think that people have to navigate how they balance work life, how they balance what it takes to do this kind of work with all their other obligations. And I know for me, I'm in a unique place because I don't have a family that's calling on me. I do have another business that calls on me. So most of my juggling is between my reselling, my styling, and my consignment shop. With the COVID-19 going on, obviously the amount of time I'm working on the consignment shop has changed and shifted the type of work I'm doing and more on my reselling. But yeah, um... That's a real thing. It's a real thing in what we do is having support and how to get support if you don't have it or how to maintain that support or what are you going to do when, when things start taking off. And I think the only way to deal with any of this is to address it head on, have conversations with people and, you know, be honest about what it's going to take to grow it. And I think one of the easiest ways to uh, navigate that is to show how much financial income you're getting. I mean, how much income is happening as a result of the amount of hours you're spending on it. And that right there can pretty much make your case for for doing it. So if you're getting $1,000 a week or even $1,000 a month extra and you're spending X amount of time on it, I think numbers don't lie. Sales reports and what you're doing in sales is always a great way to support and uh, show how valuable putting your time into something like this is. So that's it. This episode sucks. What can I say? <laughs>
Oh, man. So, yeah, the good news is that all the rest of the episodes are awesome after this one, but I didn't want to not do episode eight. I mean, if you watch it, just brace yourself. You'll just be rolling your eyes and wondering where the the clues are on, on how to be a good reseller and build a $100 million company. But I think the other takeaway is we know from a previous episode that she did not join Sean on tour because she was going to focus on her business. So she obviously is taking it very seriously. She's successful now. The money's rolling in. And she's not going to let this boyfriend get in her way. And I think perhaps that's a better takeaway of this episode is it really confirms her commitment to building this company. And if he's going to be in the way of it or can't handle it, then he has to go, basically, is what she's saying. And there we have it. So I have a petition on change.org to sign up to get a second series of this. You know, uh, a lot of time has, has been a couple years since it came out. Sophia Amoroso's life is completely different since it came out. I actually uh, watched a video where she was interviewed and she said how this series was being filmed and the book was out and, and that everything, like, when the series was coming out, she simultaneously, things crashed with the company, you know, which could be why it didn't do as well as they had hoped. But this, I don't know. I don't think that had anything to do with it because uh, whether she was still there or not, this was a bad, bad episode. <laughs> I'm so hopeful they will try to get another series. I mean, even if they, they need a different show, I mean you know, just do a different show because reselling is hot and I would love to watch a show, a real show, like a Netflix series professionally done on all of this. And I think be great. I mean, there have been one or two shows out there on consignment that I've heard about. I never watched them, but I think uh, Netflix is always looking for new content. I would love for them to do a second series and I think it'd be an easy thing to do. We'll see. So sign the petition if you're interested. If you go to my Instagram, Jenny Girls Closet, there is a link in the link tree to go straight to the petition. And um, you can check that out. And that's it. If you want to be in touch, just send me an email. Not an email. It is an email. Send me an email on Instagram. I check all those. And um, I will get back to you with, with the next episode. And hopefully we'll have some better takeaways. And that's it. This is Jenny Walker with Closet Conversations. I look forward to having you with me on a future episode. If you like the song you heard at the beginning, it's called Black Hat, written and recorded by Jenny Walker and Tommy Farragher. It's from the album Night Flight to London, which is available on iTunes worldwide now. Celebrate the 10 best days of summer with Venus. For a limited time only, our fun, sexy swimwear and fashion styles are up to 70% off. And you can get an additional 10% off your entire order. Just visit venus.com and use the promo code BEST to save today. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Ace is the only national retailer that carries Benjamin Moore paint, which means the paint you trust and a huge selection of colors are right in your neighborhood. And right now, when you buy a sample of Benjamin Moore paint, we'll give you $5 off your next paint purchase. So if you're looking for award-winning service and a new look for your home, look no further than Benjamin Moore paint at Ace. Offer valid on gallons of Benjamin Moore, Clark & Kensington, and Royal Paint. Limit one $5 coupon on one gallon purchase to participating Ace stores only. See store for additional details and exclusions.